Good morning, happy Friday. I have just parked at Center for Reproductive Medicine, our fertility specialist office. I have a quick pre-op appointment this morning. Um, I do have to come to this office. We can do like monitoring and stuff at their office in Celebration, which is closer to where we live. Um, but this morning I got to take the trek out here, um, which is great, you guys know we love this area. Um, but yeah, come to the office to sign some papers. Our frozen embryo transfer is on Wednesday, August 2nd. Um, so yeah, this is like the last bit of like <sighs> housekeeping to do before that. I start my progesterone and oil shots tomorrow, five days from like five days before transfer. And yeah, I'm excited. It's gonna probably be a quick appointment. Like I said, just signing some paperwork, but again, like this sort of stuff has to get done before the, I mean, it's called like pre-op, like an operation. I don't have to go under or anything like that, but I mean, we've shown our frozen embryo transfers in the past, but so I'm excited. I've got, I'm like, I'm like giddy today. I'm gonna go in cause it is like, I'm, I want to get up there with like enough time to like be on time. Um, but yeah, this time around feels different and I think I know why and I'll explain a little bit more after the appointment. Super easy. I only had to sign one document. So downstairs is the surgery center. So what's nice about our clinic is that all of like the procedures and even like bigger surgeries, like I could have had my endometriosis removal surgery here, had this been here in uh, 2018. But yeah, our embryos are over here. And we're coming for you, babies. So it, the timing worked out well for us because it was really when we started our treatment here that they had really like made like the surgery center into what it is. Like it was like sort of just like com like coming up was I when I had my endometriosis surgery, um, my doctor was still performing those at it was then the Florida hospital, but now it's like. I think it's called Edmund Health Hospital. I think that's what like the actual hospital is called. Right down the road. Um, but yeah, so that is so nice that everything is right here. Um, and then like I can do my blood work before the procedure upstairs and then go right down and it's not like driving across the hospital and it being like familiar and everything's just right here. It makes things easy. And don't I, I did say we're coming for you babies but we are only transferring one embryo. And that's really what I had assigned for today is that I give them permission to thaw one. Um, we have four frozen and so they will thaw one and then that's what we'll transfer. Like we've said, we're so like grateful for this place and we're very excited and it's just like, it's like the emotional, difference though this time around like just like being here is like it is so surreal to me and it's like what I was referring to when I parked was that this transfer like just feels more you know giddy and exciting and you know we have the experience under our belt we have our two boys home with us um but like gearing up for Jamesy's transfer like was very a very different state of mind very different place um it was like was probably our lowest point like just you know experiencing our our loss with sweet pea beforehand um our first transfer just did not work it's a fresh transfer just straight up just didn't work um, and then obviously losing sweet pea and then going into, you know, a mental state that we'd never experienced before. Um, and like the, the transfer is like, it's not comfortable. It's not enjoyable. It's like, it is like, 
you just, I don't want, like the, the word that keeps coming to mind is like a state of desperation of just like hoping like this is finally gonna be the thing that works for us. And for so long, we felt that way, you know, when we started just like, I was on, I think I was on Clomid, um, like our first bit of fertility treatments, you feel like, okay, this is going to be it. And then you, you do, I, I got my endometriosis removed. We're like, okay, this is going to be it. And then we did IUIs. We thought, you know, every step you think, hopefully, please, you know, you feel like you're just pleading that this is going to be it. And, you know, eventually like the frozen, we've had two frozen embryo transfers and both have worked. And obviously we did you know, we end up having a loss with one of them. Um, but it took those three transfers to get to James and it just felt like, when <laughs> will this work? When, what will be our answer? And so, you know, right now I'm feeling like frozen embryo transfers, like that is our, that is our answer. And, you know, obviously we have Teddy, um, who is a spontaneous pregnancy, um, but we didn't get pregnant trying this time around. We, we, we did want to try to not have to get to this point again um, to bring a third baby home. Um, but because we are so blessed to have like the embryos that we did from our, from our egg retrieval, from IVF, it feels so surreal to like not have to take all those extra steps and just sort of like prep my body and go. Um, and so that like, that desperation, like it, it doesn't, it's not the same this time around. I do feel very emotional. I do feel like a lot of weight. I feel, you know, I'm, I'm yearning that this works. I mean, we have been trying. And so like, I was hopeful that I would, you know, I would have a positive pregnancy test. I've seen a lot of negative pregnancy tests in the last six months. So the only way I can, you know, explain it is like, it doesn't, it, it feels more like we know our answer um to what works for us and we're using the tools that we have and even though we'd rather not have to use the tools we are so 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 incredibly blessed to have the tools to have our embryos and to have the team we have here behind us so that's my little rant of why this feels a bit lighter this time around um i do feel i mean like we've said it's like it's a roller coaster there's so even just like the smell in there like it takes my breath away being in this parking lot we would leave an appointment get in the car and call my mom and tell her everything about what just happened so like right now like i should be calling my mom um and she is no longer here to for me to call so like there's like that weight that like oh my gosh like it just feel like it just it's such a familiar place but it's so foreign in so many ways because it's life is different than it was three years ago it's so, if you would have told me three years ago that today would be my like what we have experienced and how I like our what like if I told you about today I would never have believed you and what's even more wild is that we were literally some of the last transfers in 2020 before the clinic shut down with COVID so like there's even that aspect to it of like I don't know it's wild it's it's been a wild ride um so yeah I have like a pit in my stomach but a lightness to my brain it's it's a lot and that's what fertility treatments is a lot and so that is why we're always like keen to share our story that so many people go through this when I pull in this parking lot and it's packed I just feel I just am like all of these people are going through it and even though a lot of people's stories are different, you never know why people are here. It is just truly a testament that you're not alone. If you're going through this, our message box is always open. Um, we're truly, we're truly here for you. And we appreciate how much all of you have been here for us through this. I did not expect to talk this much. Um, so I'm gonna head home. Jamesy's speech was actually canceled for this afternoon. So now we just get to go home and be with my babies and have a relaxing day. I'm popping into our old local Trader Joe's real quick for just a treat. Hey, Daddy. What you doing? Playing? 
And so even though we did have a relaxing day at home, we are going to Magic Kingdom tonight. It is the Earhart's last night of their vacation. So we're gonna meet up with them there. Also, if you saw this on the ground, James E found my to-do list. <laughs> It's actually this like weekly planner thing that I've really been liking. Thankfully it was Friday and we were basically done with all the tasks, but this is how it looks. I got it for like less than $10 on Amazon. We really have had just like a low key day. Peter's finishing up his last meetings. James, he's taking a nap and I'm gonna start making dinner. A lot of you asked for a cook with me. So I'm gonna do a cook with me. I am making vegan enchiladas. So I'm starting with the filling. I have a red pepper, frying up in some olive oil, salt, pepper, minced garlic. Um, so I'm gonna start with this. Just because like they're the crispiest, you wanna get these nice and tender first. <laughs> this is such a funny angle. Um, next I'm gonna chop up some zucchini. Just a single zucchini. Um, the main filling is black beans, and I have another kind of bean. Maybe white beans. Um, yeah, so this is like just adding a little bit extra flavor, the zucchini and the red pepper. What beautiful colors. So I added the zucchini in and some veggie stock as well as onion powder. I'm gonna just let this cook for a little bit. It's 411. Not that it's gonna take forever, but like we also have they also have to bake, so I'm just getting started early. So just like a note, this is kind of like a longer recipe. So for our side tonight, I got this rice orzo pilaf mix from Trader Joe's. I forgot to say, I didn't find anything pumpkin-y there, but I did get a couple of things just like a donut, it's a fancy drink for the weekend, and a couple of things for groceries tonight. And I I just looked like at the little info, it says contains soy and wheat, and I was like, great, no milk. Well, it does have chicken stock in it, so this is not plant-based. Um, but we're still, we're still gonna eat it. Teddy's gonna safely help me add some of this little Traeger veggie rub, just a little, just like give the veggies a little bit of mm as they cook. You always want to season as you go. That's what I've been taught or really heard. Um, Ricky saw me shaking his phone to do shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. You help mama. Shake, shake, shake. Good job. Our beans are drained and rinsed. I actually went with red kidney beans instead of the white beans. Um, so I'm gonna throw these in now that the veggies are tender and give them a little like smash. I'll probably add in some veggie broth just so that the inside, um, like the texture of what's going inside the enchilada is nice and smooth. They don't all have to be smashed, but just like most of them. Teddy has been swiping little beans as I'm cooking. Um, and yeah, I'm just gonna like mix it up, maybe get a fork in there. Press it down a little bit, and then I'll show you once it's the consistency that I like. Mm. He's a beanie boy. So to finish off the seasoning part of the filling, um, I added in lime juice. I added in a dash of liquid smoke. Um, smoked paprika, and then a lot of cumin and garlic. And I'm gonna add a little bit more salt at the end. Um, when it's looking good, it's looking like the consistency I want. And now, I just have to assemble. And here is that final look at, no, no. <laughs> at the filling. Teddy wants another bite, he's a fan. This is the enchilada sauce I'm using from Trader Joe's. I'm gonna pour it in here, dip the tortillas, fill them with the filling, place them in a pan. So here they are. If you're into cheese, this is the time. Just lay it on. So I just prepared the rice pilaf like the box said. I just used olive oil instead of butter. Mashed up some avocado with 
lime juice, salt, and garlic. Then made a little plant-based chilango sauce, with mayo, Tabasco sauce, salt, like seasoning salt. Those will be our little toppings. Whoa! How does um the meal look? Ayo, <laughs> Daddy just ate so much beans. It's a that was a box. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's not chicken. Peter says this is an Italian beef stance kind of meal, so we're eating at the island. By the way, there's Italian beef at the Food and Wine Festival. We gotta try it. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> so we're at the Polynesian, gonna head to... What is the big building called? The big old box? The, the, it's like the ceremonial house, yeah. I think you're talking about the castle. To hop on the monorail to go to Magic Kingdom. It's our last night that we'll see the Earhearts. They go home tomorrow. Yeah. So we're taking the scenic route from where we parked and uh, soaking up some Polynesian vibes. It's the weekend. It's the weekend. And I have a short week next week at work. Booyah. We didn't think about something. Oh, do the hula. We didn't think about something coming the scenic route. And it's the fact that our children love the Polynesian beach sand. This doesn't look like like the Magic Kingdom. This is the Grand Floridian. Rookie parenting mistake that happened here. So we found a sucker in our bag and we gave it to James. And then Teddy saw, and then Teddy really wanted one, but we only had one, so a mistake on us. So Sarah and Teddy, Sarah and Jamesy stayed on the monorail to continue Magic Kingdom. I said to hop out with Teddy to come into the gift shop to grab a new pack, because I want Teddy to have one too. And then Teddy and I are gonna take a leisurely stroll and meet them up. Just did something I have not done in a long time, and that is cruise the Emporium without a stroller. And it was glorious. Quick little update. I never walked this path during the day. I never walked this path going in this direction. And in hindsight, it probably would have been way quicker if I just went down to the gift shop and went back up to the monorail. But this is still sweet time with my little Teddy. Ah, can't see it because I, I, I have my phone and not a zoom lens, but when you're walking, this way, and you look that way, that's the ticket and transportation center, the parking lot, or what some people call it. You can see the dolphin, the swan. Well, to be honest, I have no idea which one it is, but you can see one of those from over here. It's so weird after more than a decade of being like this Disney junkie cast member, not cast member, local, not local, obsessiveness to see something from an angle you've never seen before. Cool. Ah, to be in Magic Kingdom on a Friday night, welcome in the weekend, this is the move. Walk to the flagpole, and then, boom! Castle, looking glorious. Okay, somehow James and I ended up in this Swiss family treehouse. Haven't done this in a minute. <laughs> wow, is that cool? <laughs> he was thrilled. While well, the Earhart's do some genie plusin, we're going into Philhar Magic. <laughs> Are you stuck? I am. Oh no. All right, a little bit of a longer wait, but it's going to be worth it. We've got front row of Philhar Magic. <laughs> How'd that get unplugged? Well, I'll just plug it back in.
I don't think we give this Gaston and LeFou fountain enough love in the world. Especially at nighttime. So we think we're gonna do Ariel, but we do want to see the Earhearts. But they they got a Genie Plus day today, so they were like hopping on their lightning lanes and everything. So that's what we were doing. We're definitely our own gonna thing. see fireworks. Yes. So we'll meet up with that. Then they have a Tron afterwards, so we'll see where the night goes. Yeah. With our big old massive party down these days. Uh huh. Where what people mover is. Ooh, it's a solid one and good for a big crowd. Pure chaos. It's just chaos. We're with all the kids, chaos. And it's not a 20 minute wait, but it's a walk on. This is a walk on. Sarah's with Teddy getting the bottle in. Woohoo! I got some literally, so give me some thumbs up. Thumbs up? Nice. What ride are we going on? Do you love it? Are you going to sing Ariel songs? Yeah. Yes. We found our friends, took a nice photo pass, and now with fireworks starting in 10 minutes, we're just gonna hang out and watch it from over by the fountain we were just raving about. Firework time or playing with the crate? Get it, Teddy, get it. Hey, Papa Sue! Katrina's about to go on this at night. <laughs> they have a lightning lane. people to get off your lawn. I mean old lady. Old lady. Yeah, I use grandma's cane and like, I go, hey, get off my lawn. Waving around. But when you're here, you say, hey, pipe down on that ride. That is so funny. James is playing with a fan rather than using it because that's what happens when you're a big toddler. And we got Mr. Elvis here over here. We opted for the ferry and we got very lucky. Yeah. With it. We, we were one of the last families on it. Yeah. And so we took the ferry because it's actually not a bad walk to go from the TTC to the parking lots of the Polynesian. Yeah. So, said bye to the Earhearts. That was a bummer. Yeah, always. <laughs> it's late, but we're home. But I wanted to show you the worst thing ever is you make a fresh glass of ice water and you leave it at home all evening. 
Guys, it's late. We're delirious. We're going to bed. But I want to let you guys know, <laughs> as a parent of two and a dog, I am at the nice, responsible age of how old am I, 31? Or am I 32? You're 31. I'm 31. Oh, I can't breathe. I don't know where any of a particular part of my article of clothing are. So I, I did, in fact, through Sarah's guidance, we ordered a package of Hanes, Hines, Hanes, from Amazon Prime that arrived today. Don't have to do laundry now. No, I think we just lost some clothes. It's good to be home. We know what our goals are. We know what we hope to accomplish. And believe me, it's the most exciting and challenging assignment we've ever tackled Walt Disney Productions.